In an article written for the Mail on Sunday, comedy writer Graham Linehan described himself as the most hated man on the internet. We live in what appear to be especially inflammatory times. Whether pre-existing anger, distrust or hatred have simply been revealed or these emotions have actually been amplified is up for debate. The conduit, however, we can all agree on. It is the system which Linehan has identified as containing the majority of the ire directed at him. So who is Graham Linehan? And how did he become? In the Republic of Ireland, a referendum is held that, if passed, would amend the constitution and state that a mother and her unborn child would have equal right to life. A yes vote would effectively ban abortion on the island. Not knowing whether to go either or, I thought I would be on the safe side in voting yes. Well, I pray a lot in that, but really, I really believe the baby needs to be protected, like, you know. I voted yes. And can you tell me why? Because I have a daughter. Ireland, a majority Catholic country passes the vote by two-thirds. In Tokyo, 29-year-old Shoko Asahara starts a new religion. It combines elements of many pre-existing beliefs, including Buddhism, Hinduism and Christianity. He promotes his new faith by handing out leaflets, preaching from street corners and teaching yoga and meditation. That same year in Granard, County Longford, Anne Lovett leaves school and makes her way to a grotto dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It was here that she went into labour. She was nine months pregnant. It was under the statue of Mary that she gave birth to her baby son. He was stillborn. A few hours later, she was found by passers-by. She was brought to Mullingar Hospital, her lips blue and fingertips white. She was given blood and oxygen, but she stopped breathing. It was on January 31st, 1984, that Anne Lovett died. She was just 15 years old. In 1984 in Dublin, Graham Linehan was also 15 years old. Bullied in school for being tall and geeky, he came into his own after he graduated and got a job at Hot Press magazine. It was here that he met Arthur Matthews, and they began to write comedy sketches together. They started off by submitting sketches to the TV series Alas, Smith & Jones. One of their early credits was on the satirical news show, The Day Today. The Home Secretary's new measures for dealing with neighbourhood noise have been introduced this week by Broxbourne Police, and it looks like they're working. Noisy people have been a problem in Broxbourne for years, but now if the police receive more than five complaints against a single household, they just turn up and release a tiger through the front door. Matthews and Linehan went on to contribute to a large variety of shows, including The Fast Show, where they created the popular characters of Ted and Ralph. Meanwhile, Shoko Asahara's new religion had grown exponentially and transformed into a doomsday cult, with Asahara as their prophet. They used anime movies and media appearances to recruit their over 15,000 members. The cult's belief system had become a distorted version of its Buddhist origin, seeing themselves as spiritual saviors fighting growing materialism. In a perverted mirror version of the 80s economic anxiety in the United States over Japanese corporate takeover, they saw the United States as the head of a shady cabal of influencers over Japan. Joining the US in this imagined plot were the British royals and the Rothschilds, a family of wealthy Jewish financiers. Asahara saw MK Ultra as proof that the US was employing global mind control efforts on the world population. Project MK Ultra was a series of ethically objectionable and often illegal experiments done on human subjects by the CIA. He also believed that the Beatles were a brainwashing campaign led by the Tavistock Institute in the United Kingdom. Its name is derived from the Tavistock Clinic, where it was initially established. It was these beliefs that were used as justification for an attack on the Tokyo subway in which they released a deadly nerve agent. 14 people were killed and thousands more injured. 
Many perpetrators of the attack were highly educated as well. They held various degrees in science and technology, and even included a medical doctor. 1995 was also the year the Unabomber demanded that his manifesto titled Industrial Society and Its Future be published, or he would continue his mail bombing campaign in the United States. Local, state and federal investigators continue to work around the clock collecting evidence from the blast. The early morning explosion severely injured Yale University computer scientist David Glertner. He was apparently opening his mail in his office at about 8.15 when the bomb went off. It was printed as a supplement to the Washington Post and New York Times. In his manifesto, he describes how technological progression has had a destabilizing effect on society and inflicted damage on the natural world. He stated that because technological progress is seen as a net good, that it will not go away on its own, and that collapse of the industrial system will be devastating, but worth the cost. It was these beliefs that led him to direct action. The violence of his bombing campaign he saw as necessary for people to take his word seriously. Although not known at the time, the Unabomber was Ted Kaczynski, a maths prodigy who held multiple degrees, including a PhD in mathematics. While studying at Harvard, he was the subject of an unethical psychological study. The study lasted three years, with Kaczynski himself being subject to over 200 hours of abuse. Sources suggest that the study was part of the United States MKUltra program. Another TED came to prominence that year when Graham Linehan and Arthur Matthews created their award-winning sitcom, Father Ted. The show satirized many topics, including racism, Nazis, and the Catholic Church. It ran for three seasons and is considered one of the best sitcoms of all time. Father Ted ends and Linehan and Matthews part ways as writers. Linehan would go on to work on a variety of other projects for the next few years. In 2006, Linehan created the incredibly popular and critically acclaimed sitcom, The IT Crowd. The show follows the IT department at the shady Renholm Industries. It was during the making of the second season of The IT Crowd that RTE, the national broadcaster of Ireland, commissioned a documentary about Linehan. In the documentary, Linehan comes across as the same geeky kid from school. I'm never happy until I hear that first laugh. When I hear that first laugh, usually, I don't know what's wrong with me today, but usually I can't eat until I hear the first laugh, you know? But say for some reason I'm fine. The documentary ends on a triumphant note, with the IT crowd being a success. It really feels like we've turned a corner, you know, we're getting, we're getting great reviews and, and um, a million more people watched it this week than watched it last week. We're on episode two now. And a jump of a million is a pretty dramatic jump. Um, so, uh, so I feel like, I feel like I've kind of, um, to me, this has been a really long kind of, um, really long process of, of showing that I can write a sitcom on my own and wanting to prove that. And I feel like I can finally relax about that now. Now that I've done this, I can, I can take it easy and try and, you know, turn my mind to, um, you know, just working without worrying about perception, you know. It was shortly after this that Linehan became an active user on Twitter. There's going to be good time, good time. I know there's going to be good time. On Twitter, Linehan speaks out against Gamergate a movement defined by its targeted harassment of women. For those still blissfully confused, here's a few links about the worst thing to happen to gaming ever. Lanner, I'm pro Gamergate. I care about discourse and ethics. I don't spread hate on Twitter, and I don't hate women. Don't generalize. You are an enabler of the ones who do, and an idiot for not realizing that. By your own logic, one Catholic speaks for all Christians. One priest enables all atrocities. Don't paint me into your black and white narrative. I'm sorry, I'm going to do that. Gamergate is a hate movement and you are an idiot if you think it's about ethics. Linehan and his wife publicly talk about how they had sought an abortion in 2004. Because of this experience, they join with Amnesty International on the campaign to legalize abortion in the Republic of Ireland. Shoko Asahara, the mastermind behind the sarin gas attack on the Tokyo subway, is executed by hanging. The 
Eighth Amendment is removed from the Constitution of Ireland after a long, hard journey of campaigning by various feminist and human rights groups. A few months after, Linehan is in hospital being treated for testicular cancer, and this is tweeted. Hey, hey, everyone. In case you didn't know, Glenner is trans misogynist as fuck and subscribes to turf ideologies. I'm sorry that this is the case, but, well, it is what it is. Turf's out. To explain, TERF stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. It describes a feminist who does not include transgender people predominantly by not recognising trans women as women, although they object to that labelling and prefer the term gender critical. Linehan had been espousing his beliefs on transgender people for a while now. Absolutely right. I'm sick of hearing feminists disparage, usually by men, because they don't agree with current gender ideology. So you don't think trans women are women? The answer is no, you fucking useless woke versions of religious police. So stop bothering my friends for opinions you have ascribed to me yourself. Got it? K. Okay. Great. Bye. Here we can see Linehan explaining the genesis of his views. I guess it was the IT crowd episode. People went nuts and I just thought, this is bollocks. That made me look deeper into it and I saw that women were being silenced and bullied, etc. I fucking hate bullies. The episode in question is titled, The Speech. Originally aired in 2008, the episode has a subplot where Douglas Renholm, the arrogant and sexist boss of the company, starts dating a trans woman, April, although he doesn't know she is transgender. When he finds out about it, this leads to an extended fight sequence between the both of them. Linehan received backlash over this on Twitter. Here is one exchange with someone after he expressed commiserations over the suicide of a trans woman. I'm a bit, hmm, about Glynna tweeting his commiserations over the Lucy Meadows news when he used trans women as the butt of his joke in his own sitcom. Matt Berry's character was the butt of the joke. Glynna, by example having the trans woman throw the first punch, it didn't come off this way. Certainly it upset a lot of my trans friends. I see. Well, that's not how it was intended. Bad writing on my part. We can see here Linehan appears to be open to criticism. To further explain Linehan and his views, we must first take a look at the gender critical movement. I was busy thinking about boys, boys, boys. The gender critical movement has recently grown in opposition to the progression of transgender rights. It is present in many countries, but has come to prominence in the UK. They call themselves gender critical or gender critical feminists. Referring to it as a feminist movement is controversial, as there are a large amount of intersectional feminist groups that are trans-inclusive. Also, there are some organizations that hold gender-critical views, but object to other feminist causes such as reproductive rights. Polls done on the subject suggest that men are 1.5 times more likely to hold gender-critical views. Before you understand the gender critical movement, you must first understand a few things about transgender people and the concept of gender as it is currently understood in the mainstream scientific community. We'll start with the difference between sex and gender. Now there can be confusion as these terms are often used interchangeably. Sex, however, is used to describe whether you're male or female in a biological sense. So this means chromosomes or reproductive organs. Gender has a few components. Broadly speaking, it is the characteristics of women and men that are socially constructed. There is also gender identity, which is the innate sense of gender felt internally. Transgender is an umbrella term that covers people who feel that they don't fit the gender they were assigned at birth. So this could mean people assigned male at birth who feel they identify as female and vice versa. It also covers a whole host of other identities. For example, non-binary people don't identify as either gender. Hello, I'm Taylor. My pronouns are they, theirs, and them. People who identify with the sex assigned at birth are referred to as cisgender. Now, the term transgender is relatively new, but there is historical evidence for similar concepts, such as the South Asian Hijra or the Native American Two-Spirit people. More recently, the Weimar Republic allowed for a transvestite certificate, which was issued to allow people to dress opposite to their natal sex. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty cool. I, uh... I wonder what they did next for human rights. The gender critical movement labeled these concepts of gender as gender ideology. Because they don't agree with current gender ideology. And reject them, stating that biological sex is the only material factor to consider. While the term gender ideology is relatively new, this framing of the issue has roots in Catholic discussion from the 90s. 
but the call for revolution against the whole historical shape of sexuality leads to a revolution against the biological givens as well. In 2004, the UK Parliament passed the Gender Recognition Act into law. This allowed transgender people to change their gender on official documentation. However, the process was quite bureaucratic, involved and costly. Because of this, human rights groups advocated for a reform of the Gender Recognition Act in order to streamline the process and make it a lot easier for people to change their gender. It was during this push for reform in around 2016 that the gender critical movement started to really gain momentum with various pieces published in the mainstream media. The gender critical movement has a few talking points. One is that allowing people to change their gender would erode the pre-existing rights of women. They think this would allow people assigned male at birth to gain access to single-sex spaces such as public bathrooms and changing rooms, and see this as a threat to the safety of women. Sometimes it is stated that looser gender identification laws would allow cis men to identify as women and therefore gain access to these spaces in order to commit assaults, although other times it is used to state that trans women would be the source of this threat. In the UK, Gender Recognition Act reform would not affect the ability of trans people to enter single-sex spaces, as they are already protected by the Equality Act. A Gender Recognition Act was passed in the Republic of Ireland, Linehan's home country, in 2015, and there has been no rise in assaults in women's bathrooms. To demonstrate, here is an article from Ireland about a man who assaulted a woman in a public bathroom. He didn't legally change his gender, he just entered the bathroom as it was a public space. If laws were brought in to prohibit NATO men from entering single-sex spaces, they'd be ineffective as a deterrent, as there are already laws against assault and harassment, and so if a perpetrator wasn't put off by these laws, they'd be unlikely to consider any others. Oh, I'm gonna do such a big sex attack! Oh, it's gonna be the biggest sex attack! Oh, it's gonna be the biggest sex- Oh, sorry, I didn't realise this was the ladies! It would also require a security guard of some kind at these spaces. This creates its own problems as masculine presenting women or feminine presenting men would be vulnerable to misidentification. Here we can see a cis woman with immaculate drip being kicked out of a bathroom after being mistaken for a man. Linehan has also exhibited this problem when he accidentally correctly gendered a trans wrestler. Here we can see Mac Beggs, a man who was assigned female at birth, wrestling a woman as he was forced to compete in a category of his assigned sex. Linehan incorrectly assumes he is a transgender woman who is gaining some imagined advantage due to being a natal male. Another talking point of gender criticals is the concern over children, specifically in regard to people under the age of 18 transitioning. Gender dysphoria is the name of the condition when someone feels discomfort due to their gender identity not matching their biological sex. It presents with a broad spectrum of severity but can be incredibly limiting on a person's ability to comfortably live their life. I envy the way that they can get ready really quickly, whereas with me, it takes its time, obviously, because of what I've got to deal with, having got a body that I don't want and that I'm currently trying to fix. Children suffering from gender dysphoria are encouraged by clinicians to socially transition first, such as using their preferred pronouns, a new name, or a change in how they dress and express themselves. A concern of gender criticals is that children are being affected by peer pressure and social influence due to the increased visibility and discussion around transgender issues. This has been labelled rapid onset gender dysphoria. This term is not recognised by any professional organisation or listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. The only evidence of it is a poster published in a science journal. The study itself is rife with methodological errors. Only about 250 people were surveyed from three websites. These websites already expressed an anti-trans bias and also presupposed the idea of rapid onset gender dysphoria. Also, it was only the parents of trans children who were surveyed and not the children themselves. No studies since have been able to replicate the results. Their next concern is the use of puberty blockers. From our understanding, the overview is that they are a safe treatment and a better alternative to the effects that puberty can have on children suffering from gender dysphoria. We will not be delving further into the use of puberty blockers as we feel unqualified to talk about the subject. This is because we are not endocrinologists, child psychiatrists, or clinicians of any kind. I'm a pop star, not a doctor. We are not the parents of a transgender child, and we are not transgender ourselves. And frankly, we do not see how the medical care of a relatively small percentage of the population is any of our concern. Hi, there's the rub. Percocet, Miley Percocet. Percocet. <coughs> <coughs> All 
Alright, mask off. We're not a fan of the turfs. Get ready because we're switching gear. We're ready. Are you ready? Let's do this. To be gender critical is to wear the mask of expert in several fields, and usually selectively and inconsistently. Discussions about the concepts of gender and sex raise scientific, historical, philosophical and anthropological questions. The subject of medical treatment raises the legal and ethical question of a child's ability to consent. Gender criticals don't reject other socially constructed concepts such as race. They are not also concerned about a child's ability to weigh the cost and benefits of other types of medications such as ADHD medication or birth control. Linehan also plays expert in all these fields. At the moment, um, children are uh, basically being experimented on with uh, uh, puberty blockers. He also spoke out against Anita Sarkeesian, a former target of Gamergate, when she expressed support for trans people. We can see here that Linehan is expressing that his support was conditional, a tit-for-tat mentality where he is owed something due to his previous actions. Linehan has since revised his views on the Gamergate controversy. But what it really was, was a confluence of millions of different things happening at the same time. There were a lot of, and I now realise there were a lot of uh, young men who were much closer to the truth of what was happening in colleges and stuff mm. than I was, who realized that there was this censorious, illiberal, um, uh, uh, cancelling kind of culture that was really dangerous. Graham, if they did pick up on anyone being censorious, uh, it, was, uh, it was you, because you were on Twitter. And you were you were trying to cancel them. It, it was it was you, you fucking muppet. He has compared gender reassignment surgery to mutilation, and in one tweet seen here, compares it to David Cronenberg, a film director famous for originating the genre of body horror, which contains grotesque violations of the human body. Linhan went on to clarify that it is in fact Cronenberg's film Dead Ringers to which he was drawing the comparison. So just so you know, in Dead Ringers, one of the main characters, Beverly, uh, becomes obsessed with what he views as aberrant genitalia and then has a mental breakdown. Linhan is seemingly incapable of seeing the irony in this. You could say the Jeremy irony. <laughs> uh. Linehan also bravely targeted trans children's charity Mermaids by directing members of the forum Mumsnet to launch an email campaign against the National Lottery in order to rescind funding. In response to this, YouTuber Harry H. Bomber Guy Brewis started a charity livestream of him playing Donkey Kong 64. He ended up raising over $300,000 and the lottery funds were also granted. Brewis thanked Linehan for drawing attention to the charity. And on top of that, now tons more people know about mermaids and want to support them just to spite you. Good job raising awareness for a charity, genius. This situation Linhen predicted in an episode of Father Ted, where Ted stages a protest of a smutty movie, but in doing so only draws more attention to it. <laughs> Nothing is left to the imagination. Well, I'll be off. Goodbye, Jim. <laughs> When Professor Grace Lavery, a trans woman herself, expressed concern over classes moving to Zoom due to the coronavirus pandemic, as this would mean conservative parents could be present during teaching certain topics of which they wouldn't approve, such as queer theory. Linehan likened Lavery's statements to grooming. We don't feel we have to explain why teaching a form of critical theory to legal adults is not the same as child abuse. Here is another interaction we think is of particular note. Women might like to know that there are a significant number of woke dudes who think this is true. There is no definition of woman. Fucking hell. Graham, could you define chair for me in a way that includes all things which are chairs and excludes all things which aren't? A separate seat for one person, typically with a back and four legs. Pick it up! Bet my money on a stupid horse, I lost that. So I ran out to the track to get my cash back. I just gotta leave this place with a big so I found a fucking Jackie and I grabbed it up. Pushed it down to the ground and I punched him in his face. Yeah, I stole this phone that put him in his place. Me and the horse, we ran out of the place. Then we took my horse back to my place. Stupid horse, I just fell out of the porch. Since his Twitter ban, he has continued to post on Substack, a subscription newsletter platform popular among various grifters and losers. On Substack, Linehan continues his transphobia. He scaremongers by cherry-picking examples of trans women such as Jessica Yanov and claims them to be representative of a whole. We could just as easily point to Jared Fogel and claim that all men, including Linehan, are paedophiles. 
Now, just to be clear, we're not saying Graham Linehan is a paedophile. But he is a man, and the majority of paedophiles are men. So, we'll leave it up to you. Linehan's fear-mongering is Jeremy Ironic as he worked on a show called Brass Eye. One episode tackled a then-current moral panic in the UK over paedophiles. Why can we no longer think of the British Isles without the word pedof in front of them? I'll give you a good example of something that I can't really see being made now is Brass Eye. I can't see Brass Eye getting anywhere. Because the, you know, I don't think it's, it's so much a... Um, I don't think it's so much that everyone's become more censorious. I think it's that there's a couple of generations that have grown up with the internet and find any kind of uh, test of their views um, violent. Linehan is taking part in some revisionist history here, as at the time the episode received the most amount of complaints of any show ever, and its creator, Chris Morris, was attacked in the press. Here you can see one of those right next to an article sexualizing the then underage singer Charlotte Church. Linehan is unable to let go of a gender binary. The gender bender! Incapable of separating the concept of womanhood from reproductive rights or physical appearance. The mask slips off and then he shows his open disgust at masculine presenting trans women. That's a man, right? That is a man. Okay, please put, right. a, please put me saying that this is a man over the shot of the man, please. Unfortunately, Linehan is not alone in holding these views. Many of his talking points are repeated by other gender critical feminists. Yes, I think male people are not women. I don't think being a woman slash female is a matter of identity or womanly feelings. It is biology. People of either sex should not be constrained or discriminated against if they don't conform to traditional gender expectations. That's Maya Forstadter there, who was a lightning rod of controversy when her contract wasn't renewed at her job due to these and other tweets. This caused JK Rowling to come out in her defense. Dress however you please. Call yourself whatever you like. Sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. Live your best life in peace and security. But force women out of their jobs for stating that- Oh, Jesus Christ, Joanne. She didn't- she didn't state that sex is real. Like, she actually was quite transphobic. Also, fucking hell, like, trans people know that sex is real. Like, it's just a complete fucking misframe- Anyway, fuck you, Joanne. Fuck you, Joanne. Fuck you, Joanne. Fucking mediocre white woman. But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. Hashtag I stand with Maya. Hashtag this is not a drill. Which was followed by her publishing an essay advocating for for gender critical views. Before researching for this video, we thought that the gender critical movement was just garden variety bigotry. But there is something else in its midst. Something sinister, and yet familiar. We would like to now focus on some other members of the gender critical movement. We'll start with Jennifer Billick, who wrote an article for The Federalist. The Federalist is a news site that was pro-Trump, spread misinformation about the COVID-19 pandemic, and defended Roy Moore, a Republican politician accused by multiple women of severe sexual misconduct. In her article, she purports that transgender activism in its current form is actually an agenda pushed by a shady cabal of billionaires. This includes trans woman Jennifer Pritzker and George Soros, both of whom are Jewish. George Soros is also famously at the center of the QAnon conspiracy theory, which claimed that a group of satanic, cannibalistic pedophiles who operate a global sex trafficking ring were working against the interests of Donald Trump while he was president. Go to a person holding a sign who gets paid by Soros or somebody. The same QAnon that led to various acts of real life violence. We can see here Jennifer Billick directly addressing the perceived link between Judaism and the transgender rights movement. We can see Billick here agreeing that the Jewish men she mentions are not white, which is an idea rooted in white supremacy. Billick's theory has also been posted on a neo-Nazi website. You know, when you talk about someone not being the sex that they in fact are, right, this is about getting us to disengage from material reality. And I just want to put in a plug for 11th Hour Blog. Probably a lot of your followers know about it, but if anyone doesn't, please follow 11th Hour Blog. Jen Billick has done some astonishing research into the money behind this movement. 
Linehan has also referenced her theory on his substack. Am Shinrikyo believed in a Rothschild-led Jewish conspiracy. QAnon also implicated the Rothschilds as part of its conspiracy. David Icke, a footballer-turned-conspiracy theorist, writes about a new world order. He too implicates the Rothschild family. Rothschild Zionism is a secret society created by the Rothschilds, controlled by the Rothschilds, and they uh, run um, um, Israel as their bloody fiefdom. He also claims that they are a race of lizard people. Welcome back, everybody. A bizarre new twist in the Nashville Christmas Day explosion. Investigators are now exploring several conspiracy theories as potential motives, including evidence the bomber believed in lizard people. Here you can see Jennifer Billick promoting Ike's ideas. QAnon also believes that Hollywood elites are harvesting adrenochrome from children for use as a drug. If you were to watch Schindler's List, you would say, boy, that was terrible. I wish I was around that. Maybe I could have done something. But you can do something now because they're pulling kids out of the darkest recesses of hell right now in dumbs and all kinds of places. Uh, the adrenochroming of children. At the moment, um, children are uh, basically being experimented on. This itself is a repurposing of the myth of blood libel that Jews killed Christian children in order to use their blood in rituals. The Rothschilds, blood libel, were also the focus of Nazi propaganda. In fact, anti-Semitism has an even longer history than that. One can compare a rather large number of German laws and decrees with their counterparts in the past and find complete parallels, even in detail as if they were a memory which uh, automatically extended to the period of 1933 and 1935 and 1939 and beyond. They invented very little and they did not invent the, uh, the portrait of the Jew which also was taken over lock, stock and barrel from writings going back to the 16th century. So even the propaganda, were the realm of the imagination and invention even there, they were remarkably in the footsteps of those who preceded them. Sometimes you just hit the gas and start thinking about the Crusades, man. Another person in the gender-critical movement is Helen Joyce, an Irish journalist who works for The Economist. In July 2021, she released her first book titled Trans, When Ideology Meets Reality. You can see a quote from Richard Dawkins on the cover. That is the same Richard Dawkins who said it would be immoral to bring a Down Syndrome child into the world which is a little like Nazi eugenics programs. And it's also, you know, uh, it's fucked. You know what? I wonder what else those Nazi eugenicists got up to. The Liebensborn program. Okay, this seems interesting. Wait, what the fuck? Joyce in her book parrots the same tired gender critical talking points. Single sex bases, concern trolling about children to name a few. There are many salient points that could be made talking about the flawed methodology of the studies she cites and the conclusions she comes to. But I think we'd rather spend our time pointing out how much of a lobotomized, milk-fed dullard Helen Joyce is. She claims that civil rights movements start by winning hearts and minds. Uh, no, actually. Almost no civil rights causes were widely supported until after they were legislated. She also states that access to safe spaces and medical care are not the needs of the poor. Yeah, that's right, Helen. It's the rich people who need access to public spaces and face barriers to health care. She even thinks somehow medical care should be reliant on popular consensus. Here you can see her failing to grasp the reason why the trans rights cause has progressed faster than previous civil rights movements. Yeah, Helen, I wonder why. I mean, what did we not have back then that we have now? Wait, let me see if I can get to the bottom of this. Helen Joyce, like Ted Kaczynski, holds a PhD in mathematics. Ted also saw uh, transsexuality as a bad thing. So that's actually two things he and Helen have in common. Here you can see her citing the statistic that in Ireland, before 2019, a woman had never been imprisoned for a sex crime against an adult. So the first conviction for marital rape in Ireland was 2002. So I guess they didn't happen before then either. God, I wonder what it was. Oh my God. 
Here we can see her wondering why Christian conservatives and biased right-wing news sources such as The Federalist happen to be on her side of the issue. You know, it's so interesting that the people who historically have never had the interests of women in mind and the, well, how do I put this? Fucking liars are suddenly correct. Here she is decrying how most women's groups have decided to advocate for transgender people, including Planned Parenthood and the British and American Humanist Societies. Am I so out of touch? No. It's the trans rights activists who are wrong. Here she states that why more women in sport aren't coming out against transgender athletes is because of their agreeableness, and so they don't want to speak out. She reduces women down to their reproductive function. Yeah, that's that's right, Helen. It's the uh, trans advocates who are the new patriarchy. I tell you, the gender criticals are not sending their best and brightest. <laughs> Helen talks about autogynophilia, the theory that trans women are fetishists who are turned on by the thought of being female. She cites its inventor, Ray Blanchard, who is a <coughs> controversial sexologist. Here Blanchard is appearing on the podcast of Edward Dutton, a white supremacist. The thing that predicts having children now in this country is being Muslim and being stupid. She also cites Michael Bailey, a supporter of Blanchard. We can see a tweet from him here where he ponders the existence of female sexual orientation. She also repeats the same claims as Billick as there being a global trans agenda shaped by billionaires naming Jennifer Pritzker and George Soros. Going back to Soros, so he has this agenda for um, basically... Uh, is that the funding of these investigations came from one George Soros. Here we can see Joyce openly promoting Jennifer Billick's work. Although she has recently distanced herself from Bellick and been aghast at the notion that people would call her anti-Semitic. But you must be anti-Semitic. So I was just sitting back, I go, well, let me, let me then, I guess I better do some exposés on the Jewish mafia. As hard as she tries, the concept in Joyce's books aren't so easily disentangled from Bellick's. You can't just take somebody's work, claim it as your own, and yet reject the ideology behind it. Also, Helen Joyce copies the who from Billick's writing, but provides no why. A review in the Evening Standard noted as such. What is the aim of these billionaires who are apparently influencing society and policy? It's like presenting a crime with no motive. Why not just assume that it is a sense of morality that guides their actions? Or tax breaks? I mean, Helen, they're billionaires. They're not trying to, oh, they're going to destroy the concept of gender. No, they're literally just trying to hoard wealth. I mean, you work for The Economist, you pigeon-brained, hateful, West Brit soup-drinking motherfucker. Although it is hard to tell if Helen is conniving or just stupid. Perhaps she expects her readers to take the next steps without her having to explicitly state it as to grant her plausible deniability. Or maybe she's just so fucking dumb that she thinks billionaires Donating to charity is somehow significant. <laughs> Jennifer Billick, however, does present a why. She believes the ultimate goal of the transgender rights groups is to push transhumanism. Wait, I just noticed that her Twitter handle is BJ Portraits. <laughs> transhumanism is the belief of pushing technological boundaries in order to augment humans. Billick believes one of the goals is to put wombs in men. Actually, that's interesting. I wonder what that would look like. Blah! Transhumanism believes in a merging of man and machine to extend life, improve cognitive function or physical ability. There is the scientific global elite trying to take control of human development. They've almost got control. They want to kill everybody because they want to merge the machines and become God. I think it's very catchy, you know, transgender, transhumanism. They both have trans in them. Well, Billick ties this together with Martin Rothblatt a millionaire trans woman who is a self-described transhumanist. Helen Joyce also brings her up in her idiot book. Rothblatt is also, you guessed it, Jewish. The satanic Jews that control everything and mostly everybody. A bunch of sociopaths hmm. have injected themselves into the, uh, the world brain. <laughs> yeah. And we are now repeating things that are insane. You know, yeah. they're just insane because these sociopaths are, are, are working the controls. You know, I wonder if there's any other gender criticals who have been accused of anti-Semitism. Oh, no. Oh, Joanne, no. What are you? Wait, is that a Star of David? What's that doing there? Another gender critical controversy is over the Tavistock Clinic. Essentially, if you look at the Tavistock. The same clinic the Tavistock Institute developed from. The same institute that the Amshin Rikyo cult claimed developed the Beatles as a form of cultural brainwashing. 
Here we can see some fringe gender criticals making the same claims. We consider gender critical ideology as almost conspiracy theory light. Entry level conspiracy theory. Anyone who sides with them is promoting this conspiracy theory. I'm team turf. I agree. I agree, man. Gender is a fact. You have to look at it from a woman's perspective. Okay, I guess we're doing this. Hey, did you know that Dave Chappelle's mother worked for Patrice Lumumba? If you didn't know, Patrice Lumumba was the first prime minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo and was openly anti-colonial. Did you know that the Congo has $24 trillion of mineral wealth? And so if it was able to stabilize and create a unified state, it would be one of the richest countries in the world? Did you know that Patrice Lumumba was assassinated by the Belgians and CIA in an attempt to secure mining rights in the region? Did you know that after Lumumba's assassination, Dave Chappelle's mother got a job in the US State Department? After working for a man who was refused assistance because he held communist views, the US government gave her a job. You know, maybe it wasn't her first job for them. Hey look, David, we can promote conspiracy theories too. Anyway, Linehan and Joyce have not openly embraced the more anti-Semitic parts of the movement. They have also not espoused the other fringe ideas in the group, such as the claims about the Tavistock Institute. But we think this has led to it gaining an air of respectability that it does not deserve. What it has in common with other conspiracy theories is a rejection of science and rational thinking. A rejection of observable phenomena and consensus. Just like Om Shinrikyo and Ted Kaczynski, some of these people are well educated. But unfortunately, that does not make them immune to conspiratorial thinking. And I'd just like to say something that I think it might be to do with, and not everyone's um, got onto this. It's called transhumanism, yeah. right? It's called transhumanism. And the reason why they want to divide everybody, right, look at BLM, Antifa. They're all backed by George Soros. It's to make the divide between black and white. Now, they, they've co-opted the gay movement and people that legitimately find that they're not living in the right body, good for them to, to make the decision that's right for them, and I support them in every way. But to bring it down to kids being kind of um, pushed towards this. I saw a mum a while ago, I said, how's your daughter? Oh, well, um, she identifies as a boy now, so it's a they. And we're talking about 15 year old. And I was kind of like, hmm, that never happened in my day. What's going on with this, you know? And the transhumanism thing, I just want to warn you, this mRNA, um, DNA altering experimental treatment that across the world, they want every single person in the world to take this mRNA treatment. They are calling it a vaccine, but it's not. It's a DNA altering treatment. And guess what? There's a Supreme Court ruling um, in America done in 2013. So they've planned all this where if your DNA is altered, you are no longer human. People have to realize how easy it is to set up a thing where hundreds of people are writing to you telling you that the person you've employed is a monster. Linehan expresses distaste for these types of campaigns, but is often the instigator of them, as in the case of mermaids. Here you can see him decrying the use of the term punch a turf, itself derived from punch a Nazi, a phrase you can see Linehan using here. This is a reference to a viral video of neo-Nazi Richard Spencer being punched. Come kind of assembly. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, let's watch it again. Come kind of assembly. Oh yeah, just one more time. Come kind of assembly. Richard Spencer has close ties with Edward Dutton, the man whose podcast Ray Blanchard guested on. Here you can see Linehan promoting the work of Blanchard. As a, as a lifelong lefty, uh, although I've lost my tribalism completely. He complains about him and other gender criticals being kicked off Twitter. Even though he himself left Twitter for a short period in protest of their refusal to ban people such as Donald Trump and even Richard Spencer. One of the worst things that's happened to humanity, which is Trump's win. Joe Biden and the Democrats are even pushing policies that would destroy women's sports. Got a lot of new records that are being shattered, that they are now being forced to compete against those who are biological males. Yes, and how shameful as well that I just found out yesterday 
that the female weightlifting record for New Zealand has already been beaten by Laurel Hubbard. Both Trump and Linehan are ignoring expert consensus on this issue. Linehan can be seen here blaming pornography for transgender people. Despite making some rather questionable statements about porn in the past, here we can see him talking about the work of Brooke Magnanti, an erotic author. Obviously, he is making the hilarious joke of research being a euphemism for masturbation. Here, Brooke relays an interaction she had with him after he made those tweets. My Linehan brush was he kept tweeting about how much he liked to wank to my writing. Ew. So I asked him to read a sitcom pilot I was working on. He freaked the fuck out and implied I was trying to destroy his marriage or something. He also recently posted pornographic images of Grace Lavery and her husband without their consent. Linehan paints trans rights advocates as Nazis. The thing about the Nazi comment was, was what I was trying to get across was that this is a hinge moment in history, just like, just like during the Nazis. And we always ask ourselves the same questions. We ask ourselves, what would I have done? Would I have bowed down? Would, have, would I have done, done everything I was told to do? Or would, have I, would I have resisted? Would I have stood up and would I have stood up alongside people who were trying to do the right thing? That's what I'm trying to do at the moment. If you were to watch Schindler's List, you would say, boy, that was terrible. I wish I was around that. I, maybe I could have done something. You can do something now. His comparison to Nazis is particularly distasteful considering the Nazis also targeted the LGBTQ plus community. In one such instance, they raided an institute of sexology and burned over 20,000 books. The institute's founder was Magnus Hirschfeld, who was gay and Jewish, and an early advocate for gay and transgender rights. He helped to bring in the transvestite certificate in the Weimar Republic. Oh, but some people burn some Harry Potter books when railing express gender critical views. So I, I guess that's the same. Uh, yeah, let me do my part. Kiwi Farms is a site known for its rampant racism, homophobia, and a particular distaste for transgender people. They have carried out a number of harassment campaigns with several of their targets dying by suicide. They refuse to cooperate with New Zealand police after the Christchurch mosque shooting. Here we can see Linehan saying they do amazing work. LGB Alliance and Women's Place UK. I know these fucking women. Here we can see the LGB Alliance saying that adding the plus to LGB opens the door for bestiality. They have also stated that opposing gay marriage is not homophobic. He joined a harassment campaign against Rape Crisis Scotland for offering their services to those he deemed men. They had to release a statement saying that they have always served all gender identities and sexes. Here we can see some of the abuse they received. Just had a visit from the police. I was asked by a very polite representative of my local force if I would go to the station to be interviewed by Northern Irish police. I told them no, and that I had been harassed by trans rights activists using the police, not just once, but twice before and that they could email me with any questions that they might have. So what lunatic have I annoyed in Northern Ireland? Anyone have any suggestions? Oh, perhaps now would be a good time to announce that I have a special ah, price. offer on this site for the month of October. Please subscribe. Aside from anything else, it sounds like it's going to start Hi. Uh. around here and you won't want to miss it. Yikes. Here you can see him advocating for gender critical therapy, which is conversion therapy by another name. Conversion therapy is the practice of attempting to change somebody's sexual orientation or gender identity, and is considered pseudoscience and comparative with torture. One well-known proponent of conversion therapy was Robert Galbraith Heath. Some of his methods involved inserting electrodes through the skull and using electric pulses on the brain. He also used a variety of psychoactive substances and even claimed to have cured a patient's homosexuality. He is suspected to have taken part in Project MK Ultra. Robert Galbraith Heath died in 1999, but Robert Galbraith became the chosen pseudonym for J.K. Rowling. And again, this is, I've, I've made a real journey. I've made a real journey over the last couple of years. But one of these things, the internet, I used to be a bit of a internet uh, utopian. 
Am Shinrikyo, Ted Kaczynski, and Graham Linehan all sense something is wrong with the world. Am Shinrikyo saw a decline in spirituality and a rise in materialism. Kaczynski saw the unending technological growth started by the Industrial Revolution as a disaster. Linehan sees the problem as men in pigtails. But when you see a 20-year-old kid in pigtails, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. This is, something's gone wrong. Something's really gone wrong. All this progress hasn't led to happiness or contentment. The internet is a hall of mirrors, you know? Mm. And we have no idea who we're talking to. We have no idea if we're doing the right thing at any one moment. It's, it's, it, 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 I, I think that as a species, we weren't ready for it. Linehan mentioned Cronenberg and his films deal with the distorting influence of technology. In Videodrome, it's a broadcast signal which corrupts and ultimately radicalizes the main character, Max. Linehan, in an interview with The Telegraph, described Twitter as part of his nervous system. Perhaps Martin Rothblatt's transhumanist vision is coming true and Linehan has merged with technology. But instead of being enlightened, he has become twisted, perverted into something primal and singular. Technology has had its benefits. Medical technologies have extended lifespan. Communities have grown as people who are once isolated have found each other. It's facilitated social change, allowing people to be exposed to ideas, concepts, and experiences that they never would have without it. Jennifer Billick talks about putting wombs in men, but the idea of ectogenesis, growing something in an artificial womb, isn't some far future concept. It has even been discussed in feminist literature as either being a path to liberation or further oppression. We live in a crushing capitalist world, forced into categories we do not fit and exploited endlessly. Technology that is meant to free us has become another tool of oppression. The few shackles it has removed, such as the one of gender, have only been replaced by several others. Social media has turned our lives into a panopticon and everyone is both a guard and prisoner. Context collapse inflames passions and destroys nuance. Linehan has had personal information posted online. My wife's address has been published online. J.K. Rowling received death threats. But so too have many, many trans people been subject to horrendous levels of abuse. Sometimes at the hands of Linehan. and sometimes by people emboldened by him. Because once you speak up, you create, a, you create an atmosphere that makes, makes it okay for other people to speak up. Gender criticals talk about being silenced, when the people who have really been silenced are the voices we do not hear. Anne Lovett wrote a letter to her boyfriend before her death. Father Quinn, the local priest of Granard, demanded to read it and compelled her boyfriend to burn it in order to protect the town. That is what it looks like when a woman is silenced. Here we can even see J.K. Rowling correctly assessing that all the social media backlash hasn't meaningfully affected her life. Fuck you, Johan. The internet is a hall of mirrors. Gender criticals create this hall of mirrors, reflecting the language of the oppressed back at them. They call trans people fascists when they have allied with the fascists. They say transgender people are practicing conversion therapy when it is they who advocate for it. They claim that transgender people have captured institutes when it is them who are overrepresented in the government and media. Sarah was part of a WhatsApp group of journalists and cowardly skeptics who were working in the background on fighting gender ideology. Here you can see Linehan comparing transgender people to Buffalo Bill the cross-dressing serial killer from The Silence of the Lambs. Well, I want to draw the comparison between him and Hannibal Lecter, wearing the skin of his victim in order to evade capture. The internet has been indiscriminate with the information it disseminates, leading to the growth of conspiracy theories spreading and mutating. We see the same patterns within them. An organization pulling the strings, be it Jews, lizards, pedophiles, trans activists. Because these sociopaths are, are, are working the controls. These patterns are like genetic markers in a virus. Graham Linehan refers to transgender people as a social contagion. Here are the trends for the term transgender in Ireland compared to the UK. And now gender critical in Ireland. And now the UK. We can see that gender critical beliefs are the real social contagion. 
and the UK is facing an epidemic. Gender critical being the latest moral panic, no different to the satanic panic of the 80s and 90s. Members of satanic or occult groups share common traits, such as an interest in old occultic forms of religion and worship, and the access to perform perverted sex acts, such as homosexuality, bisexuality, sodomy, bestiality, and necrophilia. It is common for these groups to kidnap their victims, usually infants and young children. Children are uh, basically being experimented on. Gender critical views have manifested stronger in the UK than other countries due to over-prevalence in the media along with a capitulating government. The government can score easy political points by blaming a vulnerable minority. It takes focus away from a botched response to a pandemic and the fallout from Brexit. The supermarkets admit that the shortage of lorry drivers is causing minor disruption and that in recent weeks there have been issues with the supply of salads, fruits and berries, yogurts, vegetables and bottled water. There is also a more insidious element. If you can get people to reject one aspect of mainstream science, you can make them doubt all of it. Another moral panic took place recently in the United States, centred around critical race theory a complex body of legal scholarship taught at the university level that became a catch-all term for racial justice movements such as Black Lives Matter. The worry became that these topics were being taught in schools. Critical race theory is anti-white and it's not American. And so legislation was drawn up in some states to ban it from classrooms. These laws had nothing to do with real critical race theory and were just a way to stop children being taught about slavery, colonialism, and the civil rights movement. Here we can see Maya Forstadter, a prominent gender critic on the woman J.K. Rowling defended, stating how she disagrees with critical race theory. Now, Scottish school children are to be taught that the concept of race was deliberately invented by Europeans to justify crimes against humanity. And children who need to be able to count and multiply are learning anti-racist mathematics. The SNP government has been condemned for a range of recent measures, which its critics say smack of intolerance. They include encouraging children as young as four to embrace transgenderism. Children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an inalienable right to be gay. Honk of Thatcher's deed. Linehan also posted a different GB news piece that was condemning the teaching of critical race theory. I hear you're a racist now, father. The debate on critical race theory in America was sparked off by the Koch family, a family of oil billionaires, intent on gaining political control and creating a disbelief in science. You just got fooled by a business. Gender critical feminists are pawns in somebody else's game and made to work against their own self-interest. The phrase is trans rights are human rights. It has been repeated so often it may appear to lose meaning. But what it means is once you open the door to discrimination of one group, you open it to any. The problem would be eliminated if gender criticals could look at the facts and accept the reality of transgender people. Let go of their shared madness. A folie à deux. Or should I say, folie le féminisme de la deuxième vague. So a shout out to the one person who got that joke. However, they are stuck to a rigid binary. The human mind just doesn't work very well with certain questions. We're very bad at probability. We're always making these dichotomous divisions of things into two. One of the things we're very bad at is, is when we're faced with something that's very complex. We have this terrible tendency to try and make things simple. Their attempt to simplify what is in reality complex leads to confusion, fear, and hatred. Driving them to ally with conservatives, religious fundamentalists, and uphold white supremacist and patriarchal systems. Academic Judith Butler was right when they said that anti-gender ideology is one of the dominant strains of fascism in our times. Por supuesto, hermanas y hermanos, tiene que ver de conciliación. Yo puedo enojarme con algún compañero de ustedes. A veces problemas se presenta. A puedo enojarme tal vez con el compañero Freddy Mamani. Algún problema. Ah, entre compañeros nos reconciliamos. Pero con los racistas, fascistas, no va a haber reconciliación, hermanas y hermanos. Nos ganan o los ganamos. The world is burning, and the flames are getting closer and closer, while we're stuck having to argue about who's allowed to have balls. Evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould said, I am somehow less interested in the weight and convolutions of Einstein's brain 
than in the near certainty that people of equal talent have lived and died in cotton fields and sweatshops. I think this applies to all marginalised groups. What art, insight or concepts are we missing out on by suppression and segregation? In many ways, the story of trans people is still unwritten. <laughs> like me for instance I'm completely isolated amongst my celebrity friends at the moment there's one or two people who are speaking up for me um, who I'll always be grateful to but for the most part they not only don't speak up for you they actually come out against you Linehan has ignored cries from friends and loved ones comic artist Kate Beaton posted an impassioned plea when he was still on Twitter Author John Ronson also engaged with him on the subject. Ironically enough, Ronson has covered the topics of Martin Rathblatt, public shaming, and conspiracy theorists. Here is his brother-in-law. It was me, and he is not pressuring your wife. He is concerned about your mental health. Recently, author Neil Gaiman expressed similar concerns for Linehan's mental health. I worry about Graham's mental health. I had an email exchange with him last week that left me worried. He's definitely not the person I used to know. This led to Linehan posting the aforementioned email exchange between them on his substack. No, it was the stream of concluding obscenities that made me worry about Graham's mental state. He quoted our email exchange but left that bit out. My wife and I had to split up after a while because the stress was so much. We have an alternate theory for the separation. Linehan has also caught flack from members of his own team. One piece of evidence in favour of single-sex spaces is that even feminists who call themselves gender-critical are unable to recognise an abusive man in their midst, as long as he's being superficially pleasant. I refer you to Lewis's second law of feminism, judge a man by how he treats women who disagree with him. How is me agreeing with Glynna over, say, Herzog, any different to you agreeing with Singal over Posey? I'm not sure what your point is. I always have to side with the woman even if I don't agree with them or their approach. What a ridiculous thing to suggest. You're agreeing with a man who uses his platform to pursue vendettas against women he thinks owe him some kind of devotion. If you endorse that kind of obsessive unpleasantness, not just disagreement, you are on the wrong side. Here a woman is referring to his use of a private photo of her recently deceased partner in his campaigning. Linehan predicted his own fate. At the end of the controversial episode of the IT crowd, Douglas is left all alone, unable to be with the love of his life due to his bigotry. We believe Linehan is experiencing the sunk cost fallacy. This is a logical fallacy that refers to a cost that you have paid and which can't be recovered. Because of these sunk costs, you erroneously believe that you should invest more money instead of cutting your losses. We believe that Linehan has incurred certain costs such as his wife, his friends, his career, his platform, and therefore can't let go of this particular investment. Hate and anger are intoxicating, and giving up is psychologically a very hard thing to achieve. Alcohol and drug addiction recovery numbers are depressingly low, and social media plays similar havoc on the reward centers of our brain. 
Graham Linehan's hate has turned him into a damaging bigot. Now that his livelihood is dependent on espousing these views, he has become a grifter. All the platforms he has been removed from are better spaces because of it. He is an absolutely toxic element that only serves to inflame and derail the issues. His example shows that hatred, bigotry and conspiratorial thinking can consume anyone. We don't believe there is anything special about us that means we are not in the position he is in. We can be obsessive, passionate, aggressive and yes sometimes even hateful. Maybe hate could have become central to how we constructed our sense of self. Maybe that hate could have driven us to harass, dox, spew lies, and ruin our professional, personal life and do unquantifiable damage to vulnerable individuals. Is Graham Linehan the most hated man on the internet? We don't think so. But he might be the most hateful man on the internet. It's hard work writing that sort of stuff. Very, very skilled and hard work. And I don't think we, for various reasons, I don't think we appreciate, or we certainly haven't appreciated the work that, you know, it drove Spike Milligan mad. I don't think it's going to drive Graham mad, but uh, I hope not.